Uh, Mr. Mlano, how is it that people you consider as children in quotes, students, who are supposed to know better by the virtue of the fact that they have gone through formal education, even though they have not completed their term in school, are also involved in things like this, this un un unthinkable acts of violence? Well, let me start from where it started. You know, what you see happening on campuses today is a mirror of our society. And it's very easy to single out young people for blame. In the last 42 years that I've been born, I've never seen any good government. What I've seen is violence, coup d'etat, and it's even worse under political dispensation because I hate blaming our problem on military because that was, that's the way we have been blaming our problem on, new colo uh, on colonialism up to now. Even when Malaysia and other country that our colonized, or, or, or the way Nigerian was colonized, have been able to break away from that. And we keep blaming, blaming, blaming our military. But let us look at what has happened in the last 13 years. We've seen politicians breeding violence, breeding these talks, breeding all this, and, and using young people. So how do you expect them to behave? They are not going to behave any way better. It's about leadership, leadership failure, at all levels, from the time of military up to this political era. And this is what these young people are exposed to on campuses every day. You see, on campus today, they are rigging elections. On campus today, they use guns and cutlasses and everything I mean, to make sure that somebody become, it has become a do or die affair, which of course it was different from even, because we always uh, say Lucifer is better than Satan. When we were in school, our leaders would say, during our own time, it wasn't like this. But unfortunately, each time I look back at when I was last president in 1996, and I always look at, oh, it wasn't the way it is. So it's always all the time, oh, it was better in our own time. So the core problem is leadership, leadership failure at all levels in churches, in mosques, and in place of works. And that's what is affecting our young people today. So when you take your mind back to when you were NAMS president, you would have traveled around the country quite a bit. And during that time, you know for a fact, everyone that studied in Nigeria, including myself, would remember that every campus, you will find university students within the campus, and then there will be communities outside of the campus where they also reside, uh, renting a room, renting boys' quarters and things like that, could you ever fathom that there will be instance or instances where members of that community will then pick on some students who are also living within that community mm -hmm. and then they will choose to treat them the way the children or the undergraduates as we know them uh, from University of Podakot are being treated? Well, we should say thank God for Twitter, Facebook, and all the social media we have now. This thing has been ongoing for so long time. When it comes to students, we have our own what we call stop culture, which is different from the society culture. When people started blaming these young people, they're saying, okay, they went there by force to go and collect money. That's student culture. I'll give you an example. In the 90s, that, uh, precisely 1996, Ijabu community, they set off vigilante because, because of this essential armed robbery. And all the time, they always complain that are also student, they are always missing. It's either they kidnap them for ritual. It's either they uh, say, okay, they are stealing, they are, they are so fallen, they do something. So we are going to for a Senate meeting in, in Yo, and we left Ibadan. They say, okay, as at that time, no driver dare driving through Ijebu the 10 uh, p.m. Uh, and uh, down to 6 a.m. As non I said, oh, we have to go. Because we must go to Senate meeting, and we, used to, we are used to night travel. When we got to Ijebu, I led the convoy. In fact, I even drove the nun's car. Other people could follow us. When we got to Ijebu, they stopped us. No, a student that really do a lot of things stupid. I didn't even stop at all. I drove past the first barricade. The second one, I was unfortunately, I could not drive through that. And these vigilante who were not properly trained, who did not even understand English, they came with juju and everything, and they started shooting. But let me tell you, as at that time, when we were fighting military, even in our team, we have Babalawo, we have uh, Imam. If you are talking about fighters, we have those who can use ordinary hand to kill people. So when they stop us, I step out. I did not even introduce myself as the last president. I said, I'm the president of Nigeria and commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic. Because at that time, Abacha was a uh, uh, we know as military entire, we don't even recognize him. 
Those people are saying, are you stupid? They started speaking Yoruba to me. I said, no, we are not stupid. They ordered all of us to come out of the vehicle and we should sit down. And they started shouting, thief, thief, thief. They started blowing whistle. They said they wanted to search our car. As nice as I know, when we are going for a Senate meeting like that, I cannot guarantee whether we have guns in the car. I don't know what we have in the car. So I will never allow that to happen. I said, whatever they will do. They, but as I was talking, somebody came from the car and he just did like the huh! And he brought what we call a do and he threw it on the ground. Go! And fire came out. Among the students who are in the vehicle. So okay. when these people saw it, it is a problem. And before I know it, another person came out and they brought out gun. Boo! Boo! The vigilantes started blowing whistle. We already agreed that, okay, we are going to die here today, but we are ready to fight. And then we now turn it, that, okay, you have been killing our student in Osu, you have been doing this, we have come, we are ready for you today. Then they said, we, we are going to carry Kenke, they are going to put this in, on this. And I said, look at me very well, you what, kill me what first. What is Kenke? No, what they call Kenke, they will give you block. No, there are a lot of jungle justice at, at that time. When they were caught, they said that they miss cement. cement. With water, they say you should drink it. That's what has been going on for so long time. And because there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, people didn't know that for so long time there have been war against, I mean, students living in those communities. Wow. I said, it's either you kill us here today. When they saw that, even we are talking about Juju, some of the people in this fake group, they have it also. Yeah. If you are talking about superior guns, it's like these people, they are ready because we are even going <coughs> to you, we, have, we prepare for armed robbers. Even though I didn't know some of these students because we have a boss fool, but there's one guy called Ezenwa Nwagu. I wrote a special piece on my Facebook yesterday. Isn't Wagu is a human rights activist in Abuja now. He speaks all the languages in Nigeria. And he has skill in negotiation and listen. He told them, point blank, we are going to kill all of us here, but this community, forget about it. If you thought Nance president is going to be blown into a national issue, then when they saw that, okay, these people, if we cannot do anything to them, they said they will take us to palace, to the palace. If you bring anything to this place, if you get to your palace, we are going to raise everything down. It's either you kill us or we fight here. Then they negotiated with us, and it's, it's okay. They took us to the express road. Two days after, when we were coming back, we understand that they kidnapped one of the students in that community. And we still went back again to go and report to Aujale that, look, if you try anything here again, there's going to be a problem. So students have been going through this thing for so long time, just because people don't understand the subculture. That subculture within the student movement. That's not to say that we don't have bad eggs. That's not to say that cutties and all this, like, what is, has been happening in that community that their wives have been raped, they have been the issue of this, thing, but that's not the way to but treat Mr. children. Plano, yes. Mr. Plano, what would be the reason for the community going against the students who live among them? Like I said, no <clears throat> doubt in that, that we have bad eggs. I give you, I'm from Erua. There was a time where in the Erua campus, the Pultenic Gibad on the Erua campus, the, this, in fact, half of them happens, we cannot say whether they are courtes or this, and they started terrorizing the, the community. They started stealing. In fact, there was a day they shot and they killed one old woman. And the community said, no, we cannot undo this one again. And they mobilized and they started moving from house to house, getting all these courtes out, beating them. But in the process of doing that, they started beating innocent people. And that's what has been happening. So if you talk to those communities also, they have something to say. That these people, because of the subculture of students, who believe that, okay, we have all the power because at times we do, I mean, something stupid. But notwithstanding, if you have effective criminal justice system that community believe in, they will prefer to hand over these people to police, I mean, for, uh, for them to get proper judgment. Mm. But in a situation where in Nigeria, even if you report to police, in 1992, when this issue of court was started, Ima Inoya was killed in University of Adam, slaughtered like gold. And one of the people who did this happened to be a son of, I don't want to mention the name of that retired general. And three days after, we heard that this guy has been flown to London and no justice was given I mean, to that. Look at what happened about the massacre of Ife when uh, Africa and Co. were killed. Up to today, we have not been able to get justice for the killing of Africa and nine others. Because we discovered that Idaoza, when he was arrested, we started getting calls from here and there. And today, we could not get any justice for them. And the president, Larry Legacy, who happens to the president of the Student Union Government of the University of uh, Ife, at that time, up to today, is still hiding. Because of the fear of his, of his life. Up to today, these courtes are still looking for him up and down to kill him. So that's what is happening. And as I said, it's a reflection of the society. What young people have been able to expose to is violence, and they are using that, I mean, on campuses also.